Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Sabater again with the uh, Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East State Times, here with uh, Mike Lefkow, Joseph Dykus, and our special guest, Alex Simon, who's coming on the show. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for uh, letting me crash this party for the day. Well, you're helping us out because uh, you've added an extra voice to our uh, to our picks, which will be out on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday afternoon. In addition to our weekly picks, we're also going to have um, another uh story we're picking the champions in each of the divisions in the north coast section and the central coast section and i misspoke i believe that's uh that uh post is going out on tuesday afternoon so if you see this on wednesday go to the mercurynews.com eastbaytimes.com and look for our insiders picks for ccs and ncs champions um guys before we get to that uh Joseph, you were part of the story that I wrote the other day. Um, man, what was that final that you predicted for Dallas Allen uh, Clayton? Thirty-five to eighteen, I believe. I think it was seventeen. 17. Thirty-five to seventeen. 17. It was eighteen point difference. It was an eighteen point difference, which uh, I found out afterwards. I actually found out at halftime when a parent told me that uh, that score and our picks were uh, were taped to everyone's lockers at Dallas Allen. And even yeah. in the weight room, not sure who put them up. I've heard it was a player, but I'm not, I have confirmed, so I'm not going to name the player. But I heard a player made copies and uh, taped them on the lockers. What do you I think? Mean, I mean, you know what? In the moment, I thought that it was a good pick. You know, last week I laid out my reasons for why I thought the game was going to go that way. Um, you know, it's one of those things where I think the process was sound. Um, we don't base things on results. We base things on the process, right? Uh, with that said, I don't know if you're from, if you're familiar with that uh, Gordon Ramsay meme where like he puts the two pieces of bread on the lady's face. He's like, "What are you?" And it's like an I'm an idiot sandwich. That's kind of how I felt on uh, on the sideline at Annie. On Friday night. Yeah. When you when you saw forty two to six running clock under the fourth quarter. Yeah. Which which by the way, uh, it was pointed out to me at an entirely different game that. I was on the peninsula and people made note of that prediction when they saw the score. Uh, Joseph, that means that De La Salle doubled up the win total that you predicted them losing by, if I'm not mistaken. It yeah. was a, it was a pr pretty impressive night for the Spartans. Um, they, uh, they've been waiting all season for a game like that. And what a time to have a game where you, where you win with a running clock against one of the other contenders in that open slash division one bracket so uh and and lefty they made they made it clear that two of the three picked against de la salle that night and uh you were the other one so yeah i didn't know i was involved in it. i i talked to justin <laughs> allen by the other day and um he actually didn't mind having uh a couple people pick against de la salle i think he kind of felt I'm sure like he he helped fired up his team a little bit and he said yeah. they they put it together uh, against Clayton Valley. That was obviously their best game of the season. All right. Before, the before we get to the uh, the picks for each of the divisions, and then our our normal weekly picks with uh, with Left Cow and uh, and Joseph and myself, um, you know, we had uh, the brackets come out on Sunday. We've written quite a bit about mm -hmm. it. Some of it uh, not so flattering, uh, given that. Um, the systems, I, I still like the CCS system. I think there could be some tweaks, uh, to make it better. And I think, um, uh, some tweaks at the bottom to add in some of those C and B division teams that get left out every year because they don't have enough of the points, which are weighted to favor, uh, the A league teams in that, uh, in that section. Mm -hmm. Um, guys, I'll, I'll start with you, Alex. I mean, did you, did you have any problems with the, the CCS system? I mean, by, by and large, I think it works. Yeah, I mean, we put a story together really quickly on Monday that kind of pointed out like the one weird flaw of De La Salle of all teams and right. the way that they interact with the EDAL and how NCS considers Clayton Valley the champion ended up being a point differential that flipped Salinas and Sick of Her Prep. So now yeah. the Gators, who have been great all season, you know, we thought they might be the third seed. Instead, they get jumped by both Luscatos and Salinas. Now they're playing a road game. I think, Joseph, you're going to be heading down to that oh. game. It. I think, yeah, I think the one thing I'd just say with CCS is if you had one more division, I think you you remedy the biggest 
issue, which is just you have teams like El Camino, like South San Francisco, like Rancho San Juan down in Salinas that That's had Valley, seven wins. Yeah, they have great seasons, seven win, eight win seasons, but they aren't playing in a playoff game just because they're in B and C leagues. And if you just add that division and it might come up on the picks, especially if you make a division where like a league teams aren't allowed to be in it, even if they've been rated that poorly, I think that would be a really smart add. And again, it, I mean, what's what's the harm of the extra four games in the first round, two in the second, and one championship game? Right. I think a lot of those teams would just take the yeah. spot. And I wrote this morning, I mean, even, or yesterday, I think it ran in the paper today, both the uh, Mercury News and East Bay Times, uh, that, um, you know, I don't think that bottom division, even if you can't get a regional spot out of it, I don't think those teams would mind. They get, they get extra games. They get to celebrate a championship. Uh, the one other thing that I, I mentioned in that story or in that column was that, uh, you know, get the A teams out of, out of division four and five, which I think would be an easy fix. You know, you would, if, if yeah. Mountain View and, and uh, Palo Alto are going to be in the playoffs, put them in division three um, and, uh, and don't have them down there in, in four and five with the C league teams. And that's how we saw some of the teams advance last year. I mean, we saw well, I think Sacred, the Sacred Heart Cathedral, I think, came out of Division Three, right? I'm pretty sure, as a CCS. And one cool. of them, Sacred Heart Prep, then would have come out of, come out of four. Um, so, uh, if they if they can tweak that, one other thing that I threw out there, and I, I'm curious to think to hear what you guys think of the CCS's top division going to that NCS format, where um, if it were in place this year, you would have Sarah and probably uh St. Francis playing in the second week of the playoffs for a championship and then the loser dropping to play the bottom half of that bracket in the what would be called a division one final in the third week while Sarah gets a bye. Um Lefty, do you like that idea or do you think or do you think the, the CCS is competitive enough where hey just put those eight teams in and let them play and and move on? Well I, I do like the idea, but I also feel CCS is competitive enough that you don't have to do that. I mean, the NCS created that because of De La Salle. Right. Um, but then again, the West Cal is far and above any other league in the CCS. But I, right. Sarah doesn't dominate year after year. Either does St. Francis or Bellarmine or Mitty. So um valley christian um i'm not sure it's that important for the ccs you know i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to my old thing is it, it's, it's just time to separate the publics and the private well i i think yeah i mean patrick walsh is on record and it was made clear by another coach i talked to over the weekend that uh that uh patrick is on record <clears throat> saying that uh, they would he would prefer to have a private school only playoff which i i mean i i've been following high schools forever and uh and i've i've come to the conclusion it's never going to happen so just live with it um alex i think you were shaking your head you agree that it's never going to happen just yeah well one and I, I just don't think it should i don't mind the slit idea um there's certainly a thought that there's a couple of schools in particular in the wcal i mean we look at the last few years with sarah and saint francis and Last year, it was those two schools in the final, and I don't think it would shock anybody if it's those two again. And if you're seeing the top of the WCAL pull away a little bit more each year, I think that split system would work. But I mean, we're not that very far off from, I mean, 2018, CCS still had their old system, but the D1, not only were this was this the final, but MA Wilcox were the top two seeds in the mm -hmm. D1. They had the three divisions, so Sarah, St. Francis Valley were an open two, but I, I still think the split is not going to work, especially because you look at what happened last year. I mean, we had a public school beating the WCAL's third place team in Los Gatos. Los Gatos is going to host another WCAL school this year. I, I think if you split them off, you'd be, you would still have some schools that you could create an eight team division that would work between the WCAL schools. You could throw Sacred Heart Prep in there. You could throw Menlo in there, but you don't have enough of a public and private difference where they're competing against each other solely in the regular season that I think you should split them up in the postseason either. 
Right. Uh, Joseph, I mean, you're, you're coming from another state. You, we've right. made it clear that you're, you've moved out here from Tennessee and, and, uh, let's, let's move over to the NCS a little bit because, um, you know, it, it's done completely, uh, it's, it's so different than the, than the CCS. Um, what are your, you know, from an outsider's point of view, and now you're an insider, uh, what, what's your perspective when you, you were typing in those bra NCS brackets and seeing some of those matchups? Yeah. I think it's, I mean, I know I've only been here for a few months. So I mean, obviously that hasn't stopped me from making bold predictions and whatnot, but uh, <laughs> it just seems dumb that these, um, these divisions are predetermined before the season of where these teams are, who these teams are basically going to play who in what order we don't know. Um, CCS, you know, is based on how you did in the regular season. Are the calculations, is the arithmetic a little bit wonky? Sure. But I look at, like you mentioned in Monday Morning Lights, Newark Memorial playing Marin Catholic. That's a difference of what was it, 700 spots in uh, 702, I believe. I mean, that you wouldn't, you wouldn't see that in, in the CCS's uh, system. Right. One of the things that I pointed out, and, and do this real quickly before we get on to uh, who we're picking to win these divisions, but, uh, but Lefty, I pointed out uh, in the, um, one of the stories that I've done since C the seedings came out that, uh, you know, they've got that matchup that Newark Memorial Marine. Ca I mean, that just puts everybody in a bad spot, given what we just saw two weeks ago with College Park and Ignacio Valley. I mean, you know, you're pursuing victory with honor, the the, the, the C CIF motto. And, and you're going to have a matchup here where the coach is going to have to tell his kids to, to basically shut it down or or, you know, slow it down because that score could get real ugly well you can go back to last year's uh division four first round match between marin catholic which was number one and mount diablo which was the eight seed and i believe the final score of that game was 68 to 6. now i talked to uh the mount diablo coach after that game donald james and you know he said it was a good le learning experience for his kids he took the he took the high road and didn't criticize it. But, I mean, the thing is, and, and he said he was honored to be in the playoffs. I mean, his right. kids had achieved something. But it's still, it's very tough on these kids to go into the game and just get beat that bad. And it's tough on Marin Catholic, too. I mean, right. I said it's hard to the score down by the second quarter. Yep, yep, no doubt about that. Uh, anybody else have anything else to add before we get to – picking some of these divisions yeah I, i'll just throw this in and this is kind of where i feel as if we have two sections that do things about as perfectly opposite of each other and if they were able to blend each other in just a little bit together if the ncs kind of took more of the competitive equity model we see from the ccs to fold in there, there's a way where it might seem standardized across both sections that way but i think that would get us to our best point i think the ccs model actually does a very good job. And funny enough, Mark Reeb, the head coach at Sacred Heart Prep, who in theory was the guy most hurt by the model, actually says, yeah, like the games work out where you're playing about the level you're supposed to play. Right. And there's maybe mm -hmm. a tweak or two to make, maybe something. But I think the CCS is far closer to what I would, you know, if there's a perfect, I don't think there ever is going to be a perfect one. But the CCS is closer yeah. there. And I think the NCS should take a good, hard look at that going yeah. forward. Yeah, I just want to add quickly, if under the CCS's model, I think we would have Campo, Marin Catholic, teams like that in Division One, Open Division. I think that would be a better playoff system for the NCS. Right. Uh, let's get going. We're going to start with the NCS, and we're going to go uh, bottom up. So we'll start with Division Seven. Um, I went through my list. I haven't written it up yet, all of it, but pretty close to having it all done. I think you guys are all done and that story will post uh on tuesday afternoon uh, no i haven't done the, i haven't done the you're, lower division you're season. you're close but you have winners because we're picking winners yeah. i am um, yeah sort you, of. You, uh, let's start division seven um i went through it i'm going with uh saint vincent de paul out of uh petaluma the I'm, I'm with to win alex i'm you with you I'm with you actually on St. Vincent de Paul there, Darren. They're they're putting up almost 40 points a game. They've beaten a few of these teams in the division that they're facing off with already. I think uh, they've been undefeated for a reason, and uh, I see no reason not to think they'll stay that way. 
Joseph, though, I think you might be a differing there, aren't you? I mean, I'm going with St. Patrick, St. Vincent. Um, the other. The other, yeah. It, it came down between the two St. Vincents. Lefty, if you don't have your pick yet, we can we can no, have, I, we can have the suspense and we can have people read the article. Yes, read the article. No, I, if you want, I can I I can make because what I did is I took both uh, both sections and did it if it was just based on the Cal Prep rankings how the playoffs would. Oh, so, there you go. Well, who are you taking in that division? Oh, uh, I got to go with St. Vincent. I mean, they, they I had them as high as Division Three if they had just gone by strength of schedule and record. So. There, that's a good football team. All right, Division Six, Alex, who you got? I so St. Mary's Berkeley is the undefeated team. They just beat St. Patrick, St. Vincent, but Moreau Catholic has played an insanely tough schedule. They're the two mm. seed here, but I have to think that when you can show as well as they did, I mean, they gave Campo a pretty good scare earlier in the season, right? So, uh, Saint, I think I think we see a one-two matchup there between St. Mary's Berkeley and Moreau Catholic, but I'm actually going to take the Mariners in this division. Uh, I'm with you. I'm taking Keith Miner's team. I'm taking the Mariners of Moreau Catholic to win Division Six and to move on to a state game. Uh, Lefty, are you with us or are you against us? Who are you taking? Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, <clears throat> Moreau, but I, I thought those were two excellent hires. These are both first-year coaches, Moreau Catholic. Oh, and, and both teams were well. Moreau didn't win. I don't think they won a game last year, and I don't know if Berkeley, St. Mary's, of Berkeley won a game last. Year. I don't remember if St. Mary's did it. I know uh, Moreau did not. Okay. And um, be a great matchup, great storyline. Yeah, and and Keith Miners, as soon as they hired him, I said, "Oh, oh Moreau wants to get back into this." Thing. Hired him from uh, Encinal. Encinal, and I think Encinal had one win this year. Yep. But um. Coaching matters. It does. And it, to, and it's not to say the Anson coach won't get it turned around, but Keith Miner is a really good coach. Exactly. And so is the guy at St. Mary's. I mean, those two schools made sent a message this year with those hires. Um, Joseph, who you got? I'm going with St. Mary's. I'm just going with the one seed. You're going St. Mary's Berkeley. Uh, the great team, great season, and uh, mm -hmm. if they make it that far, they'll and win win that championship. They're going to be thirteen and zero going into a state game. Um, Division five. I'm going with the top seed, San Marin. Uh, Joseph, who you got? I'm going to go with Miramonte. I think that they're going to be playing. They're not going <laughs> to. You be love Miramonte. I do. You know what? And they're not going to be playing. They're not playing the Akalani's or or the Campos of the world. Yeah. I think we're going to see more of the team that we saw early in the season. Uh, putting up 40 points a game. All right. Uh, lefty, who you got? Well, you know, I'm going to go with – this is going to be bad. If it's Miramani and Sam Marin in the final, Miramani's got the great quarterback in UCLA bound Luke Duncan, and uh, Sam Marin's quarterback's coach is Nick Rolovich, the former coach of Washington State. Hmm. And my thing is that I'd rather have the player having a good game than a coach yelling instructions. So I'm going to go with Miramani. You're going Miramani to win Division Five, uh, Alex. Who you got? I let me just throw a little love to Annalee's way because oh, along with the two teams we've mentioned, Annalee, those three are averaging over 30 a game, and I think it could be a super offensive division here. Uh, I think San Marin they already beat Annalee earlier in this year, so that semi between Miramani and Annalee could be interesting. But I'll I'll st stay with San Marin here to take the division, but it should be a lot of points in this division. Oh. All right. We've, uh, we've discussed uh, this next division quite a bit. Um, Marin, Marin Catholic has the top seed, but on the bottom half of the bracket, we have Akalanis and Cardinal Newman. Um, I'm going Marin Catholic to win, but it could be interesting once they get to the final. I, if I, either one of those teams, emerges i mean i saw akalani's play campo and they're the dons are solid they're really good well coached floyd does a great job over there uh but i think marine catholic's too strong for that division so i'm i'm gonna take marin lefty who you got yeah i'm thinking the same way akalani's against marin in the final i'll go with marine catholic but yeah talk about two great coaches <laughs> that's going to be a well coached game exactly joseph who you got I'm going Marin Catholic as well for the same reasons that you guys said. Alex, 
I, I, I'm going to make it a clean sweep with this one. I think uh, it's very difficult to picture anybody beating a team as good as Marin Catholic in this division. They might give yeah. them a good game, but not winning. Not winning, correct. Uh, division three of the North Coast section. I, I think this is uh, El Cerrito's division, uh, defense. I saw, yeah. I, I mentioned it in the article that's going to post later today. Saw that defense against uh, Pitt, De La Salle, and Jesuit of Carmichael at the scrimmage. Uh, in August, I think I, I called at least one of you guys to say that El Cerrito looked pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. they, they've done nothing to change my mind. They allowed 56 points all year in a 10 and 0 regular season. I got them winning Division Three. Uh, Alex, you, one you, one thing to keep in oh. mind. I talked to uh, Pat Crookshank today. They are going to use designated sites for the finals in the NCS, so they're not going to be home sites for the the number not home. the number top seed is not going to be home in these games. For the championship game, championship games will be a designate. He said not neutral, but designated sites, whatever that means. Whatever um, the difference, well, whatever that neutral. means. Uh, I'm still taking El Cerrito, I don't care where it is. I'm taking El Cerrito, <laughs> Alex. Who you got? I'm I'm with you as well. The the defense that they are able to play just is at a at, at the elite level in high school football, not just in the NCS, but all across the Bay Area. So I'll go El Cerrito. Joseph, I yeah, think you I, told us about that defense in a story this season. We might have to uh, bring that to, one out of the dust. Yeah, I'll have to have, share that one again. Um, they've got two Division One corners, and they played against Amador Valley and Foothill and shut both of those teams down, and they're up in higher divisions. So, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I think uh, El Cerrito wins. Pr I'm not going to say they win this division easily, but El Cerrito is going to win. They're going to win. Lefty, clean sweep. You taking El Cerrito? Yeah, I'm going with the Gauchos, but they may have to play Las Lomas and Windsor, and Windsor is a very good football team. True. I, I made the point: the semifinals in this division should be some good football games, let alone the final. Well, Windsor in its last yeah. seven games is six and one. The two point loss to Camp Alinda was the only defeat, and that was and they a, were ahead. That they was a miracle that. finish. Yeah, they Camp blew Linda. that one. That was and a they miracle beat, finish. Uh, Rancher Katati and somebody, uh, Cardinal Newman. So they're a good um, one. Division two. I went back and forth on this one. Um, I think the Wolves played the stronger schedule. We're deserving of that number one seed. Their only losses were to Clayton Valley and the McClymans. Uh, they lost to Campo last year in the semifinals of this division. 17 to 14, Campo went on to beat Foothill and then won the division championship. I think that the script is flipped this year. I think San Ramon Valley uh, is the last one standing and will win Division Two with a win over Campo, even though Campo, I think, is going to have a really tough game. It, isn't it Campo Rancho in the semis? Yeah, <clears throat> and Rancho is really a, good That's too. a really tough one for Campo, but I think they'll squeak through that one and then lose to San Ramon. Uh, Alex, who you got? I am actually taking Campo. I, I mean, look, this team has played some incredible football. They've gone across sections. They've had yeah. the close scares, and they've done their job. I, I just – this team hasn't lost, and I it it's harder for me to find reasons to not pick them than reasons to pick them at that point. I, so I'm I've gonna, seen them. I think they're very good. I just think mm -hmm. they were so close last year against San Ramon. I think San Ramon is going to have that extra motivation that's going to take and, and playing at a designated site and not at Campo, unless Campo is the designated site. I don't know if that's the case or not, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm still taking the Wolves. Lefty, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with San Ramon Valley. But, you know, again, if – the designated site where we're up in the North Edge, you have to take a long, hard look at Rancher Katati. That is a good football team. And they've got the cornerback who's going to Cal. Yeah. That's true. Uh, Joseph, make you it, got? Make it 3-1. I'm going to San Ramon Valley, uh, too, which also just as a brief aside, they have to travel to number eight-seeded Berkeley for their, their first-round game. That's a bit of a quirk in the NCS's scheduling. That's a well, it's NCS bylaw. Yeah, it's not it's a short bylaw. Bylaw. It's not bylaw. Yeah, it's yeah. a bylaw that says that if you win a league championship, you get the first round game if you're playing a team that did not win a league championship. And uh, um, San Ramon Valley did not. We can safely say San Ramon Valley did not win the EBAL Mountain Division. Is we that can right? Safely say that, yes. <laughs> I, by the way, I, I'm going to come out in favor of that rule. Uh, I know we have a few people in here who think that rule isn't great, but I actually like it in part because 
if you're going to seed teams based off of their quality, you should mm -hmm. be giving a reward to teams that win their league, whatever the league may be. Uh, I, think I don't that's think what the administrators that, think. That's yeah, why they I don't put that in. I don't necessarily think that it's going to impact the result of that game that heavily, but it, even just as a reward to Berkeley for winning their league, I think it's uh, that is actually a, a weird bylaw or quirky bylaw that I approve of personally and think it's good. So make, make Berkeley the sixth seed so they're not hosting the number one seed. I mean, what about <clears throat> what about honoring San Ramon? I mean, they were they're the number one seed in that division. Yeah, and well, Berkeley would not have won the EBL. I'm sorry, no disrespect sure. to Berkeley, but let let's move on to the top division in the NCS, uh, where they crowned two champions out of this 18 bracket. Um, where the the number one and number two seeds uh, are set up to play in week two of the playoffs, and if that uh, if that becomes a reality, which we all think it will, that would be De La Salle against Pittsburgh at a designated site that we're not sure. I'm, I'm going to guess that designated site is Dublin High School, but yeah, that's, that's, that's thinking, my yeah. guess. Um, it would be a storybook victory for one Victor Galley, the retiring Pittsburgh coach who's taken a number of swings at De La Salle through the years. His alma mater, Victor uh, Galley, was a wide receiver and defensive back for Bob Latticer's first NCS championship team in 1982. He's announced his retirement from Pittsburgh after 21 seasons. Um, he could, he's going to get another swing at De La. I don't think he's going to connect enough to win. I see De La Salle winning the open division part and I'll save the, the, the my next pick after you guys tell me who's winning this uh, De La Salle Pittsburgh game. I'll start with Alex. Oh, okay. Uh, you got. Let's. You know, I think you guys might be leaning one way. I am actually going to think the storybook gets the conclusion that it would be fascinating to see. Haven't uh, we learned here? That De La Salle, print that out. <laughs> uh, I think. Yeah. Look, I, I, I actually have like on the field reasons beyond just the storybook side. I don't think De La Salle has played a quarterback that's as good as Rashada in a long time this season. And it's going to come down to him. Obviously, he missed the last week of the regular season, but it sounds like they're expecting him to be back. Uh, if he he's got to play the game of his life, undoubtedly. But I think if any team can put up the offensive side to do it, it's this Pittsburgh team. They're going to be the most talented offense De La Salle's they, face. They do and, have an offense. They do have an offense. My counter is De La Salle's defensive line, which is going to get stronger uh, with Chase. I always pronounce his wrong last name wrong. Lefty, help me out here. Chase with a T. How does he pronounce his last name? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how he pronounces it either. I'm not going to screw up, but I'm just going to say Chase, the big man in the middle, after missing the entire season with a broken foot, uh, I believe, in rugby, and then he broke his other foot the week before the Sarah game as he returned to practice. So he wasn't hasn't been on the field all season, except last week I heard he was back in the practice field and going up against the ones at De La Salle and looked terrific yeah, that does see. not bode well for Jaden yeah, Rashad yeah <laughs> I mean, the and, aren't, they, and aren't look, they also uh, getting Cooper Powers back they got him back last week oh uh, yeah that's two yeah. studs <laughs> yeah I I don't I don't love this pick that I'm making myself but part of me wants to do something a little different and have yeah. some fun with this but also you know how fitting would it be for Victor Galley to get this win it would be a great win for, and make Pittsburgh be the first school to beat De La Salle from the NCS since uh, what was that school that did it? Was it Pittsburgh back in, back in 1991? Yeah, so let's let's make that kismet happen here. I'll, I'll take Pittsburgh. I'm sure All I'm right. alone. Joseph, who you got? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I think I said during last week's episode that I thought wrongly, obviously, that Clayton Valley matched up well with with De La Salle, but De La Salle matched up really well with Pittsburgh because like you said, De La Salle has one of the best defensive lines probably in Northern California. And I've gotten to see Pittsburgh play Folsom and McClyman's. And it, it, it's, I know Pittsburgh beat McClyman's, but Pittsburgh really struggles to, to pass block. And De La Salle is probably going to be the best defensive line they're going to face all season, which is saying something. So I I think that I wouldn't be shocked if if Galley gets a storybook ending, but I, I think De La Salle wins. 
you're going to you're going to need to see Pittsburgh run a lot of screen passes, I think, and get the yes. ball outside to the edges to not let that defensive line make its impact if that's going to be the case. But hey, maybe they do. We'll see. There were a, there were a, I I know it was Christian Aguilar who's not as t- not nearly as tall as, as Jaden Rashada, but he had some passes knocked down. I mean, that were like 5 yards beyond the line of scrimmage. I mean, Cooper Flanagan, who's going to Notre Dame, was leaping up through the freaking up to the sky to knock down passes uh, in the game last week. So, yeah. Dela, uh, uh, Dela's scary right now. So, and it only took one week for us to go from what's wrong with Dela South to man, they are scary. Let look at how, yeah, look how reactionary we all are. Yes. That, well, that's, that's part of that's part of my thing too. Is maybe that was just a perfect game for Dela South, and they can't do that again. You know that. Mm-hmm. As good as they looked, Darren, you were there for it, so you know. But uh, high school football can be fun that way. You just never know what game you're going to get. Exactly. Lefty, who you got? Oh, I have to go with the Spartans. I think that um, the LSL might be rounding into form a little bit right now. They've always been tough at the end of the season, and they certainly looked good last week. All right, real quickly in the Division One part, then uh, you, uh, Alex, you've got De La Salle dropping down. Uh, the three and- of us have Pittsburgh dropping down. I've got the the storybook, meaning uh, the win over Clayton Valley again in the rematch. I think uh, Pittsburgh wins that one, and I think the storybook is going to be winning a regional and maybe even a state championship for Victor Galley to send him out with uh, with three wins in a row and three championships. Uh, which would be section, regional, and state. Um, Joseph, who you got? I, I'm. And do you even have them I'm playing not, Clayton Valley? I said Clayton. It could be Liberty. Yeah. I think. I think in that division one, I think it's going to be. I think Clayton Valley is going to round back in the form. I think they're going to. They're going to beat Pittsburgh in a in the in a shootout. It's they're going to beat be Pittsburgh and end Victor Galley's career in the NCS. Yes. yes. Lefty. Oh man, that's a that's a tough one. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Pitt. I I think they're a little better team than uh, Clayton Valley with all those receivers. Yeah. All right. Uh, real quick, let's do CCS real quick. I well, think. Well, hold oh, on. Alex, Alex, one just, more. just to jump in, I had De La Salle in that game because I'm taking Pittsburgh in the open, but I will take De La Salle to at least win the D1. I'll just make sure I get that. Yeah, in okay. There. So you're going to say De La Salle is going to win a section championship, right. which would be like his hundredth in a row or whatever. Um, and, uh, CCS, Division Five. Um, I don't know why they're in Division Five. It's a, a school that's uh, um, a decade ago was one of the, was the best team in the CCS, um, but now Palo Alto is in Division Five at four and six, and I see them um, winning this division and uh, and winning a championship and moving on to state. I'm taking Palo Alto and D five of CCS. Alex, who you got? I'm actually with you almost with that same reason. This is actually on the field. Palo Alto has improved drastically recently. And I do think it might help them just a little bit that their final regular season game was a forfeit win for them, which effectively meant they haven't played in two weeks. So they've been able to rest up, maybe get a little healthier. Um, My hope would be that if Palo Alto wins it, this convinces CCS to add another bylaw to their many bylaws and say that an A-League team can't be lower than, let's say, D4 if you add a D6 as well. So you would have two B and C league only things. So Palo Alto in the hopes that it can fix things going forward is part of the thought with my pick. There you go. Lefty, who you got? I'm sorry. I'm not picking a sub 500 team to win. <laughs> I, I just, you know, maybe they will, but I, I, I just can't do it. I'm going to take Seaside and a little bit of an upset. I think, uh, Seaside and Monterey play good football down there. Um, I know Monterey's history because one of my best friends went to high school there. But um, I, I, Seaside always has good athletes, and I think they might pull one off this year. All right, Joseph, who you got? I'm going to go with the one seed. I think Westmont wins it. Woo. That's a good. That's a good pick. I I wanted to pick Westmont. I like what Mark Kanapu's done at Westmont. I like the, the fact yeah. that they're nine and one. Um, and they, if Palo Alto weren't in that division, I would have taken them. But oh, I, I flip flop back and forth on those two teams. So, yep. Uh, division four, man, this is anyone's guess. Yeah. I went through Kelp Traps. The the margin of victory 
by Cal Preps's computer in, in these four first round games in this division, five, three, six, and seven. So all of these games are going to be tight. I am taking the third seeded Brandon Bruins to come out of this division with William Augustine leading the Bruins to a CCS championship. Taking Branham to win division four. Lefty, who you got? I think I'm going to take the number one seed, Sequoia. They, they played well all year, and I think they're going to continue. Alex? I'm actually also on Sequoia, though I do think this is the one division to me where even the eight seed winning wouldn't be that big of a shock just with how tight all of these teams are, one through eight. Um, but Sequoia, their quarterback, Johnny Larios, I believe is how you say it. He's been their leading rusher and leading thrower all season. They've got a pretty senior heavy defense. I think Sequoia, uh, they actually end up being helped, by the way, because they probably would have been a hot division up if not for Terranova's pretty shocking upset of Half Moon Bay. Terranova is the eight seeded division above them. Sequoia gets bumped down most likely because of that upset win to D4 to be the one seed, and they can uh, take advantage of that bump that way, I think. There you go. Uh, Joseph, who you got? Yeah, I know Steve Pappen. I know you're watching this. I'm going to pick Santa Teresa to, <laughs> to come in from the, I think it's the four seed. Uh, I mean, they I think, over time. I, I, yeah, I think they're I think they're a better team than their five and five record because they lose they lost oh, two games overtime and they lost a game by like three points. Uh, uh, Lincoln San Jose, the three points, who's one of the top, who's a, like a what an eight seed in uh, Division Two. So they're gonna win the championship in overtime. Double overtime. Let's say they win in double overtime. Double overtime. There. Make sure you note that in your prediction. There okay. you go. Uh, Division three. Uh, I think this division is even tighter than Division Four, with uh, the Cal Preps uh, saying that the scores are going to be one, two, six, and seven in first round games. Um, Lefty, I'll let you go first. I'm trying to remember who's in there. That's the one with uh, there's the Cal. There's Live Oak is the two. Oh yeah, the yeah. No, I'm going with Live Oak. I, I don't know. That team just fascinates me, maybe because they have all those baseball players. And oh, what's that, Jordan? Loss. What's that? They're coming off a tough loss. Yeah. Christopher. But, yeah, they did. But, uh, Jordan, I, I like Live Oak. I mean, I like their quarterback. I think Diego Castellanos is a pretty dang good receiver. And that Jordan Fuentes, he's a great player. Oh, man, he's good. Great high school There player. you go. Uh, Joseph, who you got? I, I'm gonna go with the eight seed Terra Nova. They they took down Half Moon Bay at the end of the season. They're rolling. They're very talented. Why not go? Why not go with the eight seed? Alex, I'm actually going with the six seed. It sounds like we might be upset heavy at points here. Uh, the Kings Academy first year head coach Dante Perez has done a remarkable job turning them yeah. around, and they're a totally different team than right. they were at the start. They'll start with a rematch against Menlo, but Menlo is so banged up. And junior running back Jaden Underwood, he's had a hundred plus rushing yards, six straight games. He's he's Absolutely. become an electric guy for them. I think they could roll all the way through here. Absolute stud. I agree with you. They lost their first two games to Mountain View and to and that's probably the reason that Mountain View is in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then they then they lost two Menlo school. And then but that was reeled off eight, yeah. Reeled off eight. And that Menlo team is so different than right now than they were back then. Um, They've been banged up like crazy. I thought about them. I'm also going with an upset team, a team with a rich CCS history, a team that was in the CCS semifinals last year in D2, lost a heartbreaker to Menlo School. I'm going with Hollister to mm. win Division Three. Um, so that's my pick. Oh, what well, we have four different winners for Division Three. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. We love to see yeah, that. That's good. It's going to be great when we go zero for four. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think um, I don't think we're going to have four different winners in D two. Um, I'm going with the repeat champion. I'm, I think Wilcox um, is going to win D two for the second year in a row. Uh, Paul Rosa obviously does an incredible job there with the Chargers. Uh, I see them winning. Um, Alex, you got them too, or who you got? I have a caveat. I do have Wilcox winning if we don't see jury on Dickey. I do have a lot of questions about that situation that's happened at MA this year. Dickey played when these two teams met up earlier in the year and was solid, but Wilcox won that game. Joseph, I believe you were at that yep. one, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, if Dickey is able to play, like he told our freelancer, David Kiefer, that he was trying to get back, I, I just I want to go with the most talented player in the division and say that team can ride him. He was unreal in the playoffs last year for Valley. I think MA would win if he plays. If he doesn't play, I'll, I'll roll with Wilcox then. But that's that's my caveat I want to throw right. in. Okay. Yeah. Joseph, who you got? I, I mean, I'm gonna go with Wilcox, and I'm kind of with Alex. Though, if if Dicky plays, I'd probably take him a because even that game I was at, um, Wilcox just put a safety literally right above. I believe that was his Dickey. last game. I don't mm -hmm. think he's played since then. Right, and they double teamed him like he was like 2018 James Harden. But on the last drive, they were just throwing him the ball, double covered or not, and he was making plays and i wonder if they match up again if ma is gonna be like you know who cares about the double teams get jury on the ball so lefty i'm gonna go with wilcox dickie or no dickie i mean even if dickie <laughs> is back he hasn't played for how long you know he's right. not necessarily going to be game ready uh at least not to the level he was early in the season and i, I wilcox a good team there i mean both teams are well coached but Wilcox is a really good team, really well coached, and I don't see them losing with with or without Dickey. To contest, All right, well, to contest that, my own team, they needed a huge Dickey game to beat Bellarmine to start the season, and right. they now have to play that same Bellarmine team to start the playoffs, maybe yes, with yes. them. Yes, they do. Uh, and David Keeper will be there, so he'll tell us all about it. Um, Lefty, I'm going to let you start off the last uh, last division here for CCS. Who you got in Division One? Oh, I'm going with my man Patrick Walsh and the Sarah Padres. I mean, they're ten and now. They're, they're the best team in Northern California this year. They've proven it. They beat Folsom. They beat De La Salle. They beat St. Francis. They played great football last week. That's a great football team. And uh, I mean, no way I'm going to pick against Sarah right now. Um, I agree with you. I mean, as much as I I was thought about the 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 script flipping and St. Francis doing to Sarah, what Sarah did to St. Francis last season. I just think Sarah's too talented. I have Sarah winning. My hope is, and it's just, uh, you know, personal hope because I would love to see the matchup again is that uh, St. Mary's of Stockton uh, wins division one in the South Joaquin section and beats Folsom. Let's say they beat them by 10 or 14 points and the CIF has a decision to make on which team is going to pick for the open division game to, to go up there, to go down there and, and play modern day or St. John Bosco. Um, I think if, if St. Mary's wins that division, as, as we wrote weeks and weeks ago, if St. Mary's uh, wins that division beats Folsom by two touchdowns and they've already got a 10 point win over De La Salle. Sarah has a three point win over De La Salle and a five point win over Folsom. I think the CIF, and and Sarah was down there last year to play Modern Day. I think the CIF could flip and go with St. Mary's, an undefeated St. Mary's team to play um, to play uh, Modern Day or Bosco, which would open the door for a De La Salle Sarah rematch in the regionals. That's what I'm hoping for, but. I, I'm sure it's probably not going to happen, but anyhow, I'm taking Sarah. That, that one, by the way, would be in San Mateo, not in Concord. That would be in time. San Mateo, unless the CIF yeah. says, you know what, we're going to have such a big crowd, we got to find a place to play, and they might play it like at San Jose City or maybe even Spartan Stadium because there would be Get a up, huge crowd for that game. Stanford, see what they're saying. Let's see what they're saying. Somewhere with yeah, light. A bit too small crowd for Stanford. A stadium that big. You, um, you don't want light. Hey, they might, they might draw more fans than Stanford does, though. Um, well, that's true. Joseph, who you got? You know, I really I really wanted to take St. Francis or Sacred Heart Prep. I wanted to be contrarian, but, I mean, Sarah has just been rolling for the last few weeks. They – I they the they had season. <laughs> well, I mean, they had, you know, they had some of their games where they'd get yeah. off to a slow start and – but their defense has been phenomenal Even the whole phenomenal, year. Phenomenal, and their offense has just been putting up points the last right. few weeks. So I mean, yeah, Sarah's gonna. I think they're gonna win. Alex, you get the last pick. Who you got? I just want to say, if it's Sacred Heart Prep that goes down to Salinas and wins, I think that semifinal could be quite the defensive game. Yes. Sacred Heart Prep has a 
very good defense. Maybe one of the better ones Sarah's going to face all year in the CCS. Uh, I, I, I really, I think we all to some extent want to be the contrarian, but you have to pick it smart here. And uh, I think Sarah's going to get two close games if it's Sega Heart Prep and St. Francis, but I do think they'll emerge on top. And uh, I would, I mean, I would find it fascinating if somebody could prove us all wrong. Yeah. And, and what would you like to see Sarah go down to play modern day? Or would you like to see uh, somebody emerge out of that sack Joaquin section to get a pick? I mean, one, we, I guess we need to see if it's modern day or, you know, if they maybe get upset in their section playoff, cause it could right. be Bosco still, I think, uh, yeah, look, Sarah to a lot of us because of who they played has been the best team in Northern California. And I mm. think, uh, they should be the team offered up if they can pull this off, especially if they beat St. Francis a second time in that way. I would think that's better than any local wins St. Mary's has, even comparable to the two wins that they each would have over De La Salle and Folsom. So I would love to see Sarah, if they do pull this off, keep winning, be the team for open and uh, see what Patrick Walsh could pull. Have, out. A, have a CCS representative in that game. Yeah, I exactly. mean, it's a, I guess it's a win-win situation, but yeah. Uh, I've, I've I think been they should there. just pick the winner of the USC UCLA game to play in modern day or something. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Lefty with the last singer. Um, we're going to wrap up this portion of the show. Given that, given the length, I think we will have a real quick second show with our weekly picks because this is what this was really good. Um, we went a little long and uh, we are. We're very happy to have Alex here to provide his insight and uh, and make the picks along with us. We're going to see who uh, comes out on top. Make sure to look at the story that we're putting together uh, where we explain the picks a little bit more uh, in uh, text form. So we, we've written up our the reasons why we're picking these teams. So anyhow, check us out, mercurynews.com, eastbaytimes.com. Uh, we'll have coverage all weekend and all through the playoffs. Have a good one, everyone.